for Islam. Some of the international news channels, they are saying war for peace. The Islamic madrasas should be banned. Why? Because they produce human beings who cause terror. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward our dear guest, Dr. Zakir Naik, for this uh, very informative uh, lecture. May I ask Dr. Muhammad Naik to proceed? Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah for your patient hearing. May God reward you. Now we come to the presumably more interesting session, the open question and answer session. Before we start the session, for an idea, can I know from the audience how many present here have considered after Dr. Zakir Naik's talk, Islam stands for the peace of humanity. Can you raise your hands please? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. As you stand up and dare to ask Dr. Zakir, rest assured, we take it in the spirit of positivity as we respond to your questions. We take it in a spirit of coming to solutions for the problems of humanity. As you heard Dr. Zakir speak on the topic of the day, media, and Islam, war or peace. May I briefly state, war for peace has become the unjust slogan of many tyrants and oppressors on this earth. To peace seems to elude humankind. Islam stands for peace, internal and external. It is essential, therefore, to know, practice and propagate Islam to attain peace in this life and the hereafter. Today we have before us Dr. Zakir, a well-versed person on the topic of the day. Before I begin the crossfire between your right to question him and his ability to respond to you, may I state a few rules which we expect to be observed to derive more benefit in the limited time we have available with us. As we begin the open question and answer session, may I ask the audience to kindly note three points as you put forward your questions to the speaker. Your question should be on the topic of today, media and Islam, war or peace only. Your question should be brief and to the point, preferably in one or two short sentences. You may ask only one question at a time for your second question, you would have to queue up again at the back of the row. Three microphones have been provided in this hall. On my right, there's a microphone for the ladies. They may queue up behind it. On my left and in the center, there are two microphones for gents to put forward their questions. First preference would be given to the non-Muslims to put forward their question. And I request our volunteers present to kindly guide them in the queue towards the front. You are requested to kindly state your name and profession before asking Dr. Zakir your question. With so many peace missiles Dr. Zakir has launched in the course of his talk, as the coordinator and host for this session, I urge our volunteers 
and the many Muslim brothers present here to kindly give an opportunity to the non-Muslims to come forward first and put forward their questions. And if there are journalists in them, a more preference, a more so. May we have the yeah. first question from the mic on my left. Yes, brother. Hi. My name is Rahul Bhatia. I'm an engineer by profession. I have a question. In Quran uh, verse 22, ayat 47, it says, Verily a day in the sight of the Lord is like a thousand years of your reckoning. Also in uh, Quran 32, ayat number 5, it says, To him on a day the space whereof will be a thousand years of your reckoning. And in Quran 70, uh, ayat number 4, it says, The angels and the spirit ascend unto him in a day, the measure whereof is 50,000 years. So which one, the measure of a day is a thousand years or a 50,000 year and in the sight of Allah? But the Rahul is your name, correct? Yeah. yeah. I think the same person who asked yesterday about the six days and the eight days. Yes. Mashallah, I love you brother. Thank you. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> these, as I told you on the internet, all these are common questions. You don't have to be a scholar to know all these things. Go on the internet, on the anti-Islamic site, and you'll get hundreds. I'm sure, Brother Rahul, have you read the full Quran, Brother Rahul? Uh, no. Not full. Correct. I know that. I'm afraid that I'm going to get more questions. <laughs> Sorry? I'm afraid that I'm going to get more questions, so I want no. to sort these out the first. The thing is that, see, if you want to know the truth, yeah. first you have to read the direct source. If yeah. I want to know Christianity, and if I read the anti-Christian books, then I'll become biased. So my request to you, Brother Rahul, is first go to the good side. Read the Quran, then don't ask me two questions, ask me 200. Yeah. Inshallah, I'll reply. Even Very now good. I'll reply. Okay. But I being in the field of Dawah, I realize that people go to the anti-Islamic sites first and they see the negative point, they get convinced and they are against Islam. If you want to know Islam, go to the good site. Don't go to sites like answering Islam. The thing you know, is, sir, I can actually uh, give... I answer a, your question, no problem. No, no, the point is, I can actually say, speak for half an hour in favor of Islam as well. Myself. So I'm no. not, un, I'm totally unbiased. I'll give the reply. This is all common for me. It's nothing yeah. new. Yeah. This has been asked to me several times before. I can give reference to everything, mashallah. The brother has a question that two places in the Quran, where Allah says that one day in the sight of Allah is equal to a thousand years, and one place in Surah Marij, chapter number 70, verse number 4, that one day in the sight of Allah is equal to 50,000 years. So isn't there a contradiction? Like one place it says thousand years, other place it says that 50,000 years. In Arabic, the word used is yom. The word used is yom. yom. Now, yom has got two meanings. One of the meanings is day. Day, day. Like a 24 hour day. The other meaning is a period. Epoch can be any number of years or whatever it is. So one meaning of Yom is day, the other meaning is a period. So now if you read it correctly, that one verse says that for the up years to go up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will take 1000 years of your reckoning. It will take one day, one period, which is equal to 1000 years of your reckoning. The other verse says in Surah Mahari, chapter 70, verse number 4, that for the angels to ascend unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will take a period of, one period, which is equal to 50,000 years. For example, if I tell you that for me to travel from Dubai to Abu Dhabi, takes one hour. And for me to travel from Dubai to, say, USA, in a very slow plane, will take me 50 hours. The period taken for me to travel from Dubai to Abu Dhabi is one hour. The period taken for me to travel from Dubai to New York is 50 hours. It is not a contradiction because both the things are different. So here again when Allah says about the up years to travel, it's a different time period. And for the angels to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a different time period. It's not a contradiction. There are two different things. Therefore, the time periods are different. So if you translate day, as 24 hours, then there's a contradiction. If you translate day as a period, like Allah says, He has created the universe in six days, in six ayams. It cannot be six 24 hours days. Then there's a contradiction. It is six periods, six epochs, which scientists don't have any objection to. So here too, Yom is a period. 
and all these answers you can go to my website